Hey guys, I'm Will from Tested. And I'm Norm from Tested. Norm, the iPhone 5S has been out for, let's say, three weeks now. It's, it's been a while, Seems almost like a month. it's been a while. Uh, I've been using it every day as my day-to-day -day phone. You've replaced your iPhone 5. I, my iPhone 5 is nowhere to be found. This is your iPhone 5 right here. Uh, and I'm here to talk to talk about how it is, how they've done with this how, like it is. of the hardware. It's pretty good. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, <laughs> it is an okay phone. Apple, it's, the, hey, guess what, Norm? It's the best iPhone yet. You're saying that the iPhone 5S was not a regression. There were a couple of tiny little regressions. We'll talk about them as we get in. Right. But for the most part, it is a substantially better phone than the iPhone 5. Performance is better. The camera is measurably better. It has a couple of new whiz-bang features that are OK. But it is a better device across the board. Now, that doesn't mean if you have an iPhone 5, you should trot out to the store and drop $900 to buy one off contract. That is a mistake, undoubtedly. Yeah. Uh, but if you have an older iPhone, you can get it on contract. It is a perfectly serviceable upgrade for your old iPhone. Um, to let people know what the landscape of iPhones is right now, yeah. the iPhone 5 is no longer an option. Nope, it's gone. So if you want something that's as thin as the iPhone 5 mm -hmm. or 5S, you have to get the 5S. Or you can buy a used iPhone 5. Or buy a used iPhone 5, mm -hmm. or if you're okay with iPhone, the, the color version, mm -hmm. the, the 5C is. So the five, but the five C, uh, which is has replaced la previously, Apple sold a new phone, last year's model, and two years ago's model mm -hmm. at full price, hundred dollars off, free on contract. Uh, the five C has replaced last year's model as the hundred dollar off option, and it seems okay. It's la it is la literally last year's hardware has a little bit better camera. It's a little bit thicker chassis. It comes in like five colors. They have normal names. I think it's an okay phone. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why people, when they're spending two or three thousand dollars on a phone contract over the course of the year, don't buy on contract phones and pay the extra hundred dollars to get the good one. Right. Um, There's no reason to get uh, the iPhone four S for free on contract. I mean, if, if $100 is a lot of money to you, you probably shouldn't get a smartphone. You that's probably. my that's my general policy. Yep. Unless you're t tagging onto your parents' plan or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this is the 5S. Uh, it's in my left hand. It comes in a couple of new colors. The silver color stayed the same. This is the new space gray. So when you say silver, you mean the, the white one? The white one. It was white with silver accents. This, you can see, it, 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 they look the same if I get the angle wrong. Yeah, try to get the angle so they look exactly the but same. But those are parallel to each other, and the old one, which is on the right, is a lot darker than the new one, which is a much lighter gray. You can you also tell the difference. Go go ahead, Norm. Are you saying that under the right light, the old one and the new one look exactly the same? Never. never. When you hold them side by side, they always look different. Really? It's you just because of the camera. Look. I mean, t tilt them uh, off angle. See if you can make the Oh, old I can one. make them look different on camera, yeah. but it's still in person. Yeah. I'm saying it still looks different. Um, it's more apparent on the sides. One is darker than the other. Uh, we'll this one is, is picking up a lot of glare here, but it's actually kind of a darker gray. When you put it next to a silver phone, it, it is visibly different from that. Why, why did Apple do that? I think they probably, my guess, is that the the chamfers, the, the sharp edges on the aluminum band were too delicate with the dark color, and they were able to get this color to go all the way through. I've dropped this phone a couple of times without a case on, and I haven't actually dinged up these edges yet that you can really tell. There's one little tiny nick um, but it, it, it's held up remarkably well for something that's a month old and has been in my pocket the entire time. It's also a month old. You can it is also only a month old. On the iPhone 5, that chamfer is scuffed. Yeah, Norm's, scuffed. and you, you took pretty good care of it. It's still, even, there's a couple of places here. It's, you're not going to be able to see it in this wide shot, but take yeah, our oh word yeah. for it. You can, you can it's tell. gouged up. There's a, there's a, it's messy. Um, so that's the, that's the cosmetic stuff. The champagne gold phone impossible to find on launch day. Mm -hmm. uh, the Apple store in our neighborhood got one or maybe two. Uh, none of the third party resellers had them. All that Best Buy had was black. But you were able to go in and get it at 10 o'clock on launch day. So there we go, space gray, picked up the phone on launch day. Another big difference is uh, aesthetically is on the back, the, uh, the light is a little different and the yeah. microphone size is a little different. So the microphone size, you can't really tell. Uh, but the light, you can see double height light here, single height light here. It's because there's two LEDs. Uh, the iPhone 5's flash has a warm LED and a cool LED, and it mixes them somehow to give theoretically better skin tone replication on the flash. The other cosmetic difference is on the front, the button. Hmm. So the home button has a square on the old iPhone 5. And the new iPhone 5S, which has a fingerprint sensor, they call it Touch ID in that spot, uh, doesn't have the little square. 
works exactly the same as the old one with the addition of the fingerprint sensor. The so, more you know. So that's the cosmetic differences. Uh, let's just get the performance stuff out of the way first. The big upgrade, I think, for most people on this is that it has a new generation of Apple ARM processor. It's an A7. It's a custom Apple chip. They put a, a souped-up GPU, and it's 64-bit for the first time, which on paper, again, seems like it shouldn't make that much of a difference. Uh, smarter people who are more into benchmarks than us have done tons of benchmarks, and Antec had 20 pages of benchmarks on the 5S. And it, his results show that it is significantly faster than pretty much everything that's out there, either iOS or Android, um, uh, you know, in almost everything except for a handful of GPU Did benchmarks. Did you run any benchmarks on, I ran, on the 5S? Uh, I ran uh, Sun Spider and a couple of web browsing benchmarks. My results aligned with, with what Anand was showing and the other people who do benchmarks on phones. So the performance is theoretically faster with mm -hmm. the processor, at least on paper. Uh, we'd love to see that uh, demonstrated. So it's, it's hard to demonstrate um, just by browsing the OS, because there's some time stuff that comes in. Uh, I'm going to pull up the, the both phones here. Uh, we both loaded, we loaded test it on both of them. I'm going to hit the refresh on both. We're on the same Wi-Fi network. Uh, I am mashing the buttons now. So they're just refreshing from cache. The one on the left filled the, the you saw the YouTube embed came in faster, stuff like that. Uh, scrolling is going to be a little bit faster, uh, definitely smoother. So I don't know if you can see. It's not that scrolling was bad on the 5. It wasn't bad on the 5. That's the thing. It's really evident when you compare it to, say, an iPad mini or something like that. Um, when I go into an app like TweetBot that has notably fast scrolling, then you can see it, it gets crazy fast, the scrolling. Oop. And I tapped a link. So yeah. Crazy fast scrolling with the five. Where are the places S. aside from TweetBot um, that you find that the performance really launching made a games, uh, the 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 scroll on back and forth on the OS. The, the problem, one of the problems is iOS seven has added a bunch of UI lag as part of the design, makes it a little bit hard to show page turning. I, I have to think that if this was running iOS six and we had the fast scroll with the with the judder lag when you were going over to the search and stuff like that, you wouldn't see that as much. The big place is game loads. Unfortunately, you and I don't have any of the same games on here. I don't really put games on my iPhone. Uh, so... Trust you, it's fast. Trust me, it's fast. Um, it is... It is it, using the new iPhone 5S has rendered my iPad Mini almost unusable in terms of raw performance. Like the web browsing is slow. The iPhone 5S is fast enough that running Chrome, which is a totally unoptimized browser, is faster on the iPhone 5S than running Safari, the optimized browser, is on the I, on the iPad Mini. Wow. So it, it's. I can use Chrome on the phone. That's that, how that's fast it is. That's the difference between A7 and A5. It's the difference between A7 and A5. Um, the the thing about 64-bit when we were when they were doing the keynote and they said, "Hey, we made a 64-bit processor." Everybody immediately came out and said, "Hey, 64-bit doesn't matter because you're not putting more than four gigabytes of RAM in the phone." Uh, the thing that Anand found and the thing that came out later is that they've both used a completely new architecture and added a ton more registers to the CPU, which theoretically gives apps the ability to uh, uh, cut out a lot of bottlenecks, which seems to have happened. Obviously, there's still old stuff that, that is slow, lots of older games, but some of the stuff that's come out post iOS 7 seems really fast. Um, it's laying the groundwork for the future next generation of Apple's A processor. Yeah, I mean it's a much and it's been a much smoother transfer than the Windows 32-bit to 64-bit changeover or the OS 10 32-bit to 64-bit changeover. For all intents and purposes, I don't ever know if I'm running a 64-bit native app. Mm -hmm. They just all work. So it, it, it seems like that stuff is they handled really well. In terms of just performance, whether it's playing games, loading apps, uh, is the 5S then worth the upgrade for that? I unless I I, I would not have I would not just. I don't think I could justify that upgrade, uh, given the fact that the phones cost. You know, a 32 gig phone is nine hundred dollars off contract. Well, I'm saying if you're deciding between buying a five and a five S. Oh a 5C yeah, if you're buying a new phone today, the hundred dollars is it's absolutely worth a hundred bucks to go from a 16 gig five C to a 16 gig five S. Hands down, don't buy the five C with if you can get the five S for a hundred bucks more. Um, All right. So, okay, so fingerprint sensor is the other whiz bang feature. This is something they pushed pretty hard. And I'll show you how it works. I'm going to turn off the phone, you tap, you put your finger on the sensor, and it logs right in. Hmm. Now, fingerprint sensors I've used in the past have had a fair amount of lag and have been uh, difficult to use. So, I'm going to do it again. This time, I'm just going to leave my finger on the sensor. So, you can see that. 
boom, right in. That was very fast. This time, I'm just going to leave my finger on the sensor and hit the power button on the top with my other index finger. And it, it's it's immediate. Immediate. Um, I want to talk about how you train the fingerprint sensor because it's a little bit it's a little bit different. Okay. Uh, it's in general passcode and fingerprint. You put in your passcode, which I have temporarily changed to one two three four for simplicity's sake. Uh, and I have you can store five finger, fingerprints on the phone, which is a little bit weird. Cause I I don't know if you, about you, but I have ten fingers that I use. I all two of ten fingers. After careful consideration, the four fingers that I have trained so far are my left and right index finger and thumb because those are the fingers that I use most often to wake up the phone. Okay. Occasionally, I'll try to hit the middle finger. Show you a secret. That doesn't work. Try again. If you try again two or three times, it eventually says, hey, you have to use the keypad uh, if you fail too much. So you have to know the code. The first time you reboot the phone, you have to know the code. When Springboard crashes, comes back like a new, new launch of the OS, you have to know the code. Mm. Uh, so you, you can't get away from having code. The code's required. Uh, and when you have, uh, when you have, sorry, I gotta go, gotta put my code in again, sorry. Uh, when you have this on, there's no option, you can't change the require password timeout. So normally you can say, okay, give it a little bit of slack, give it five minutes before I have to put the, the grace password period. in again. There's no grace period with this, so it's a little bit unfortunate. All right, so right now you have your index fingers and your thumbs programmed into the phone. Indeed. And uh, you can add a fifth one. I can add one more finger. I've thought about it a lot. I'm gonna do my middle finger on my right hand. So if you're going to steal my phone, those are one of the four fingers you have to steal to log into the phone. Uh, so you go to add a fingerprint, and then you just place your finger on the home button repeatedly. I kind of swizzle it around a little bit so I get different coverage areas because my finger is a lot bigger than the button. Oop, don't move too much between scans. That's important. So I went too far. Going to keep going. And then once you complete this, it'll get me to do it again uh, with the edges of the finger with slightly different grips. So uh, the upshot is that I can use my thumb, I can use either the tip of my thumb right here, or I can use the flat part of my thumb, either one works. Hmm. Um, and it's ready, so it says we're good. So I, let's, do you wanna test it out? Yeah, the fifth, fifth very finger. Very exciting. Give the phone the finger. And it popped right in. Uh, so, have you experimented with other body parts, other parts of your hand, maybe a knuckle? I have not done knuckles, I have done other body parts that I don't think I'm let's comfortable talking about. I don't have any more spots, Norm. You, you can you can get rid of uh, uh, nipples. Your, your, worked. Oh, oh, that, uh, well, that for the if, if you want to try that, I know I'm good. On camera, I, I I think viewers would love to see that I demonstrated. Couldn't, on I camera. couldn't get the dog to mash the sensor enough to get her nose to work, but the internet has taught me that dog noses work. Okay, so we'll do a knuckle. I don't think this is going to work. Oops, I clicked. Uh, so when I when I tap, it gives a little vibration when it's when it, your finger's been on there. Long I would enough. love to give the phone a fist bump. You think you can fist bump my phone? Fist bump to unlock. I think that would be really unwieldy and less fun than it sounds. Oops. So basically you just hold it down, you wait for the phone to vibrate. There we go. The edge of your knuckle. It doesn't like the edge of my knuckle. I feel like I'm gonna have to be very precise when I give my phone the finger. When you tried with your other body parts, did, you, did they have to be, like, was the, was the phone confused? Uh, no, it, did, it didn't act offended. Siri didn't yell at me. Uh, I don't know what I, you know, we, we also tried to make a negative of my fingerprint using Elmer's glue. And it didn't um, work. Did not work. Oh. Uh, knuckle worked. Knuckle works. Knuckle totally works. So the immediate, at first I was a little bummed out by the, immediate, by the lack of a grace period. Uh, I, I found that it took a long, I, I was thinking it was going to take a long time. Uh, and it was going to end up being more of a hassle to have to always log on the phone the moment it turns off. It hasn't actually been that much of a problem. And in timing, it seems like it's about the same amount of time to do two swipes of the fingerprint, which is the most it really ever takes, than to type the code in once. So I, I think it's a net win. I kind of, I find myself picking up an iPad and touching the sensor and being kind of bummed that it doesn't automatically log me in. Uh, I also heard that the actual clicking mechanism on the home button is better now. Yeah, I, I don't know, uh, you know, obviously I can't talk to reliability because the thing I found was that the home button would just stop working nine months into the phone's life. Sure, better Too than 12 months Too early to say in. that. Yeah, definitely nine months, 11 months, whatever. That's fine, you get 13 phone. is bad. Yeah. Um, it, the click is, is, feels the same. I think it clicks a little bit more evenly and it seems to be more reliable when you kind of just graze on the edges of the phone, which I know some people do. 
Um, so the other part about the other thing you can do with the fingerprint sensor is buy stuff from the App Store. Mm. Now this seems like a great idea. I'm going to show you why it's not. Well, this is something I've already bought. Let's go out here. I'm going to install the Pinterest app. Uh, I've already bought the Pinterest app. I'm going to install the Cameo app. It's free. Great. Install. Maybe free app store. Oh, there it goes. So I'm just going to start pressing the button. But wait. In order to make the first purchase of the day or in a certain time window, you have to type your password in. Oh, that's not useful. So it's completely useless. Because I don't know about you, but I don't go into the app store and buy 15 things at a time. Maybe if you buy music and videos from iTunes, it makes more sense. For my use cases, the fingerprint sensor in the app store is almost but not quite useless. Where else is the fingerprint sensor? That's it. That's it? That's it. Nowhere Buying else. Buying apps and music? Buying apps and music, videos, and logging into the phone. That's all. That's all they allow. Use it. Wow. Theoretically, they're not uploading your fingerprint to the internet. That's what they say. I think they're just making basically a hash of the of the image of your fingerprint and then using that to to sign in. So that's the fingerprint sensor. I think it's actually surprisingly cool. Again, not worth an off contract upgrade. Definitely worth a hundred bucks more if you're looking at a five C. There you go. All right. Uh, the other big technical improvement is the camera. Yeah. So. I don't know exactly what this means. Maybe you can explain to me. But they said that they have bigger pixels now. It's the same resolution sensor mm -hmm. as, as the iPhone 5. It's a 5 megapixel or something. 1.4 micron sensors instead of 1.2 micron sensors or something. I, I, what does that mean, Norm? Uh, it means the actual sensor, the, sh the physical uh, the chip? square chip that light is received and captured onto mm -hmm. is bigger. But instead of increasing the number of pixels, the megapixel count, uh, they kept five or eight megapixels, um, and then just increase the size of each pixel. So it's as if you had each pixel is a bucket, and you're at one of those fair things where you chuck the balls in the bucket, and if you get the ball in the bucket, you win a, a doll. The buckets are bigger. The buckets are bigger. Increasing the chance of throwing the ball in the bucket. Okay, so that's a good thing. Yes, for for, for both carnival rides and for taking photos. Okay, so the first thing I noticed about this phone is it you know as with every iPhone it ships with the flash on automatic mm. typically that was one of the first things i turned off uh, the as automatic well you should yeah cuz it's a terror it was a bad idea i had the flash on for maybe 2 weeks before i realized that the flash was on and it fired off startled the baby everybody cried but it, it does i hard the flash hardly ever fires uh, the low light performance is really really good so you're saying the uh, auto flash sensitivity um, the algorithm that decides when to activate the flash yes. is better calibrated because uh, the image quality in low light is better. I think it's because, yeah, the images are less grainy in low light by default. Um, we can be, to give an example, I was in the baby's room with one lamp on, on a, on a uh, shelf across the room. It was very dim. No flash. If you took a photo of me right now, would it flash? Absolutely not. If we took a photo of the lights off here, would it flash? I don't know. Let's try. This is this is taking a photo with you. No flash now. No flash. Uh, okay. If we turn off the lights, I think we probably would still have no flash. We can try it out. Maybe clip it wow. in. Drop it in after the video. Um, so the big feature that comes with the enhanced processing speed is oh oh hold on we got to talk about focus first. Okay. It's really, I don't know if there's something that's changed with the iPhone 5S to the iPhone 5. I don't take a ton of pictures with my iPhone because I, I am, I have a, a mirrorless camera. I like it. I carry it with me almost everywhere. I found the focus to be a little bit weird with the iPhone 5S in some certain circumstances. When you're taking just a single shot, it's usually pretty good at picking out a face and saying, oh, that's what I should focus on. You mean autofocus? Autofocus. If you tap to focus, it's always fine. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing things like using the new Fast photo taking, not high speed video, where you could just hold down the shutter, the like I'm mode. doing now. Yeah, the burst mode. I'm going to do that. Make a series of faces, including smiling and not smiling, Norm. Starting now. So I'm doing burst mode. I'm just holding my finger on the on the button. It's going to keep taking pictures indefinitely. Okay. Uh, I took 73 pictures just then. Wow. That seems like a mistake, right? That was a rate of uh, 10 a second. 10 a second. Um, if you don't specify the focus up front before you do that, it doesn't adjust between shots. And you can take a whole series of 70 shots where they're all out of focus. Mm. So that's kind of a bummer. Now, the neat thing about this is, oh, that's a great photo of you, Norm. Um, when you take these photos. Is that the photo that it decided was the best one? That is the photo. The iPhone looks deep into your photo. And, and it and decides, and your soul, mm -hmm. and decides which is the most accurate representation of you. I think that's a fair, accurate rep representation. No, so it does that, I think, on two criteria that I've been okay. able to tell. One is smile. You were very clearly smiling in that shot. 
Uh, it's a kind of a terrifying smile. The other is is focus and blurriness. So it looks from blur in the that's, photo. That's both blurry and terrifying. It, all of those, there's a lot of not so awesome in that picture. So <laughs> if we scroll through, you can hit that favorites button on the picture. And it'll, that's a that's a pretty, I'm gonna favorite that one. And you can pick the ones that you think are good. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the picture where everybody's smiling isn't the one you want to keep. Yeah. Um, and it only uploads the ones to the photos to photo stream that you mark as favorites. All 73 of those won't go polluting my photo stream. Uh, likewise, if you copy them to other albums, upload them to say a, a shared photo stream or something like that, you have to pick the favorites and do them manually. I think they're all great. Uh, these are all pretty good. Uh, and you can see it'll pick more than one sometimes. If it has a dot underneath it, uh, iOS thought that was a good photo. It doesn't like any of your photos, Norm. Oh. The neat thing is, can, yeah, this is. Can you is, create a little animated GIF? I wish you could. Oh. That would be wow. the best thing. Because, like, this is my favorite thing to do. I take a bunch of pictures <laughs> and then I make little cinema scopes or whatever those things are called. Uh, and uh, uh, how fast you scroll to depend, uh, determine the frame It makes it much rate. funnier or less funny, yeah. It's really, it, that would be an amazing feature. Somebody should build an app that taps into Someone that. Absolutely should I, build I, an I app. think we should cut this out of the video and just do that this that, weekend. That's a million dollar app. Right I, it's there. at least a 99 cent app. I would pay 99 cents for that. So you can see in the camera roll, it gives you a whole list of, uh, it'll save these pictures forever in the camera roll, or at least until you run out of space on the phone and have to start deleting pictures. When you sync to Aperture or iPhoto on your desktop, it'll copy all of the photos, even the so, burst mode ones. Even though in the camera roll, it smartly con condenses all the burst yes. mode photos into one frame, mm -hmm. so you're, it doesn't show all 73 you took, iPhoto's not smart enough to. I, I actually, I don't think this is a bad thing necessarily because hard drive space is cheap on a big computer. I'm fine with them dumping all of that stuff out to my to my. But iPhoto at least library. displayed in a way where it's not showing. It doesn't. All it's not smart enough to do that, unfortunately. My, we haven't seen the post Mavericks iPhoto and Aperture updates yet, which I assume are coming soon. My hunch is that they'll probably add support for this. The other thing to mention is that once you favorite something, it gets pulled out of that stack and it shows up in the main feed on its own. So you can then you know, uh, email it to people, send it around, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm going to go into the Photos app now because I want to talk about some of the other stuff. Other features that they've added is the ability to, that you can do high-speed video now. Ah, so, yes. And high-speed video, just to be clear, is actually slow motion video. It's not when, when you play it back at 30 right. frames per second. Right. You shoot 120 frames a second, you play that back at 30 frames a second, it is one quarter the speed. Mm. So, oops, we'll go back out here. Uh, what you get when you shoot high-speed video is this little window right here. What I'm doing is the places where the, where the lines are dense up here at the top are full speed. And the places where the lines are slow, are wide, is going to be the, the slow-mo. So I'll, I'll play... So that's full speed. This is... Oh, oh, this is it going? Okay, it's going out and there. And then it slows down exactly. So yeah, right when you hit the mark. And it just ramps up the, the curve. I mean, can you change it, the, the it, rate at which it slows down? You can't right now. So, uh, but what you can do is save a, a cropped version of that. You can, you, you know, the same video editing stuff is in there as before. So you could ramp up, and you can't do multiple ramps. So you can ramp, ramp down and then back up, but you can't ramp down and then up, then down, then up. If you want to do that, you have to cut it into two separate videos and then recombine them later using iMovie or some other video editing software. What did you find that the high-speed video at 120 FPS, basically slowing down four times normal mm -hmm. speed, what is that ideal for? It makes everything funny. So you have a baby, the baby's crawling on the floor, the baby does a leap through the air, it looks like she's flying, and then she thumps, and everything's funny. Uh, outside of baby examples. Dogs, it makes dogs funnier too. So okay. here is Chloe Bananas. She's about to get sprayed by the hose. That, that's a robot it's, penis. It's a little unfortunate the angle I shot this at, but... Um, so it's still recording audio. It still records audio, and then when you slow it down, it even slows down the audio. I don't think it actually slows it down four times. It seems like it's kind of exaggerated mm. for slow motion effect. Um, but you can see droplets. I shot a, a slow motion video of a millipede when we were in the woods this weekend. That's terrifying. So there's the millipede. There's too many legs. Unfortunately, I was too far away, so you can't really see the legs moving. But you can see him wiggling around doing his, his, uh, his antenna and stuff like that. Babies and animals. Babies and animals, maybe sporting events. If you're athletic, oh. that might be good. Uh, be cool. The high speed mode needs more light. So the flash is more likely to turn on during that. And I think that that happens automatically, whether you say you can do, you're okay doing that or not. 
Um, is there a time limit of how much high-speed video you can capture? I have not found that yet. I think so it'll just, go as long as you have space on your phone. Does it heat up? It does get warm. It's warm right now from playing the video wow. um, and doing the high-speed edits. Although it could also be warm from doing the, the video out. Uh, but it does get a little bit warmer. So the, so these things are both good for shooting things that are active. That, that's, the, that's the takeaway from this. The burst mode is great for shooting something that's doing something interesting that you can't control specifically. Babies, pets, sporting events, stuff like that. Um, it also is good if you have people who make faces or tend to blink during photos. You just line it up, take, hold it down, and you'll get one good shot of them. I've had really good luck taking those photos where you have like one person with a bad look on their face and there's three other people that look good and chopping the head out of one photo and putting it in the other one. So that stuff is good. The disadvantages of shooting high-speed video is obviously it takes uh, more storage Four space. Four times the space. And also it maxes out 720p. Right. Um, if you're okay with 720p, is there any reason, and you have the space, is there any reason why you just shouldn't be shooting all your videos in high speed? Um, so when you, when you go to edit the video on a desktop, the programs that I have tried editing with, I haven't used iMovie yet, I've used Final Cut and Premiere CC, both of them don't know exactly what to do with, with 120 frame per second video. Especially um, if you've made some edits on the camera. I, right, if you do the ramps, if you're gonna export video that's, 720, that's, that's 120 frames per, per second, take out those ramps, scooch it all the way to the edge, because then you'll at least have a consistent frame rate throughout the video and don't have to reverse engineer that, which given my skill level is impossible. People who are good at video may have a better time of it, but it's better to just export at 120 frames per, uh, 120 frames per second, slowed down to 30 frames per second, than try to deal with the ramps. All this sounds like really fancy camera tricks. What about just normal ass, normal photo? Normal ass, normal camera is, is everything you've come to expect from the iPhone. It's very good. It works well in low lights. Uh, the flash doesn't fire much. I haven't really, because the flash hasn't fired much in my experience, I haven't actually tested the flash stuff extensively, the new flash. So the new flash has two color temperatures, mm -hmm. so uh, theoretically in a scenario where you have both sunlight mm -hmm. and uh, different temperature light, indoor light, in the same photo, right. uh, like in a skylight in a building, then, I mean, we have, we have that scenario in, in the it office It happens here, here all the time. Then it will be normalized. You won't be, have the blue cast or you won't have a giant blown out area in the background. Um, like I said, in reality, you don't have to use the flash very often with this phone, which is which is much better than having a good flash in my book. How about HDR? Is that is that faster? Um, HDR seems to be about the same speed. You can't do burst mode with HDR. Uh, you obviously you can't do the flash with HDR. Um, the one other thing that I have noticed that's improved is when you're doing panoramas, and I'll show you one here. When you do panoramas that include both dark and light areas, previously, uh, let's see if I can get a, a slideshow up here or something. Uh, previously, there we go. Good grief. So previously, when you did, when you took a shot like this, the trees would both be super dark. You wouldn't be able to see, you'd either be able to see the sky. Oops. You'd either be able to see the sky or the trees, but probably not both. Uh, and here you can see there's good detail both on the grass in the foreground Pinch and in, in the trees. Um, so yeah, so you can see the trees. You can see the ground. You can see the trees. Unfortunately, I didn't think to shoot this with the iPhone 5 at the same time. Uh, which would have been super clever. And the sky is still really nice and blue. This was right right after sunrise. So like the sun was bright, the sky was bright. And um, so because this is the panorama mode, uh, you're moving the phone as you're taking the picture. Yes. Uh, so different parts of your rotation, the exposure is actually changing. Exactly. It seems or, or maybe it's applying HDR stuff to the dark parts. I don't know exactly what's happening. All I know is that previously this would have been a terrible panorama and now it looks pretty good. And, and there is um, no noticeable like distortion, distorting gradient in, in uh, consistent areas. The place that you get the distortion when you're doing the panoramas is the same as always. If you move to move at a different speed through one part or jog up and down, that, that'll do it. Uh, I didn't notice any distortion gradients. I did, uh, it, sometimes it took two or three times. So you did have to do it multiple times. It, it also seems to work best if you start in a dark area and go to light areas and then back to dark areas. If you start in light areas, it doesn't seem to expose down. Uh, so things I've learned. Still the best uh, smartphone camera you've used? Uh, I haven't used the HTC One. Uh, it's, it's not that great. It's okay. I, it's the best one I've used. Uh, but I, again, we, we don't test that many smartphones, so I don't know that I am qualified to say that. It doesn't have 41 megapixels. I, the zoom is, lack of zoom is continually disappointing when I'm used to using a, a, a zoom lens on my, on my mirrorless camera.
All right. So uh, one thing you can do is you can zoom video now. So you, mm. so it'll zoom in until you get to the appropriate number of pixels on the digital video. zoom. Digital zoom. But it's okay because you have more than the the than the ten. You know, you've greater than 1080p resolution to work with. Oh, let's see a quick demo of that if you want to. Show. Oh yeah, you want to see? Yeah, absolutely. And that actually makes more sense because. Yeah. Why did they not do this before? Yes. You know, okay, you so this is video. Sensor, and you're shooting in 1080p right now. I'm shooting in 1080, 1080p's. I can hold something. I'm running right now. This is a current distance, and you're zooming as you're shooting the video, and it's still... It's still 1080p. 1080p, right. and the pixels are still as big as they would be. Um, and it, it doesn't do as much... Obviously, when you zoom in, it doesn't do as much image stabilization. Can you read the license plate? Uh, I think it says, uh, back to the future. No, I cannot. It's out of time. Wow. Out of time. Damn. Out of time. Terrible nerd. Uh, so yeah, so the zoom on the video is actually a big improvement. I, they may have added that with iOS 7 on the iPhone 5, I'm not sure. Regardless, I, I'm pleased by that. Um, so th that's the camera, I think. It's, it's a pretty good camera. All right, and then there's uh, one extra piece of hardware inside the iPhone 5S yeah. uh, that's kind of nebulous. We, I don't know what it does. It's the motion coprocessor. This is, they called this the M7, which is a weird name for, mm. for I feel like that was a science fiction thing somewhere before. That, but, that's, that's where Grant and, and Tori oh, and right. shoot. Oh, yeah, we know that. Yeah. Um, okay, so the M7 coprocessor has the gyroscope accelerometer, electronic compass. Uh, is there anything else? I think that's, I think that's the main stuff. Okay. Uh, it's supposedly a, a separate chip on the motherboard, uh, and it's designed to be extremely low power. So it can be used all the time without draining your battery. Uh, previously, if you used those apps that replicate things like the Fitbit or the Nike Fuel Band on your iPhone 5 or earlier, it, because of that has to stay on all the time, it would really, really demolish your battery. So it wasn't something you could realistically do. Uh, with this, you can. And in fact, the phone by default tracks your motion data. Hmm. So you, it, it runs all the time. If you've ha I had the phone for three weeks before I installed this Argus app, which was one of the handful of apps that supports the M7 Go processor right now. Uh, and even though I didn't have the app installed, it has all of my previous steps for the, for the, for the time that I had, at least the last few days. Kind of creepy. Okay. Um, so it, it's just steps. It's just it, it tracks motion. Motion, but but not like altitude or anything. Uh, well, I mean, it, if it knows your GPS data, it can have your altitude from that. Right. You know, it's but there isn't an altimeter in the device that I'm aware of. Um, one of the things that it does do is. Uh, Theoretically, this should allow Apple or third parties to change behaviors of apps based on like the position of your phone, whether the phone's in your pocket mm -hmm. or on a nightstand. It should know when you put it on the nightstand. It just goes into do not disturb mode. That would be real smart. It would be great if it's face down or face up. You know, HTC and some other Android manufacturers have done stuff that ties into the position of the phone as it as it you know whether it's face up, face down, in your pocket, whatever. Abstracting all that data and then coming to conclusions. The data is there now. I tried a couple of the M7 compatible apps right now. None of them are as good as, say, the Fitbit or uh, comparable you know, Nike Fuel Band, whatever your app mm -hmm. is of choice. Uh, this, this one, which is called uh, Argus, is the best of the bunch. It's like a whole lifestyle tracker thing. It tells me what the weather is today and how much you, you can tie it in with your Withings scale. You can tie it in with heart rate monitors. You can take pictures of your food and it'll tell you how many calories are in them. Well, you gotta drink more water. I, I, I haven't had enough water to, go, to drink today. I, I'm, I'm sweating bullets over here. Um, I don't think any of this stuff is probably worth paying for yet. Um, I would like to see this integrated with the apps that I'm already using, whether it's Fitbit, Nike, um, you know, uh, what's the other one? Uh, the Jawbone, whatever. And you can foresee Apple integrating that data into future versions of iOS. I have to imagine that we're going to see more integration with this going forward with it's, iOS. It's, it's magic. It's, it's data that's there. Now, there was a little bit of a controversy, uh, and it's still ongoing because Apple, when they make mistakes, they don't acknowledge them, it seems. Uh, people have found that the gyroscope is reporting data that's a little bit off. And we can show this here if I can find. Do you, you have iOS 7 on here, right, Norm? Uh, so where do you store all Compass? of the Apple apps that you don't use? First page. First page, OK. Um, or second page. Second page. Top left. And utilities. Compass. OK, so I'm going to open the compass. We have to calibrate by spinning. Figure 8. No, it's not the figure 8 anymore. You just rotate until the ball is full. OK. All okay, right. so here we have two phones. They're both on the table. So they're both on exactly the same surface. And they should show you the same exact degrees when you, when you lay yeah. them down flat. I am pushing them both down. We did a really nice job leveling this table when we put it together. Zero degrees. Zero degrees. Um, let's just make sure yours is working. Yes. Oh, no. Oh. 
negative so one degrees. There's still oh yep. nope, and See, then green it dials in on the iPhone five. Yeah, shows this perfectly level table. Yep, and then three degrees off on the iPhone five S. So it's not. You know, if you're, and we can show again here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this is on the side. It's zero degrees on the on the iPhone yep. five. Level. Negative green. two on the five S. Dope. Um, it's not a complete disaster, but it's definitely not a good thing, um, as far as I'm concerned. It, like yeah. that's something that they shouldn't mess up on. And the the rumors are it's uh, because they switched to a different manufacturer for that sensor. Yeah, uh, for the M7 coprocessor. So. Uh, that that is definitely something that you should keep your eye on if you have a 5s. Don't use your 5s as a level. We're using Handy Level, the one that built in. That was we were just using Apple's Compass app, which if you swipe to the second screen in iOS 7 now has a level. And there are levels that let you calibrate. There are levels that let you calibrate. That is a better way to go with this with this particular thing. Uh, the other thing I noticed is it is much crashier than previous iPhones. Apps crash the desktop? Uh, no, the, the whole springboard crashes. Really? Yeah, uh, this is something that was pretty unusual and usually indicated that your hardware is dying on previous iPhones. Uh, I've installed the, all the current updates. I still see, let's say, a handful of crashes every week. I maybe had 10 or 12 Where you have to over. reboot the phone. You don't have to reboot the phone. It automatically it just crashes out, goes to the Apple logo, comes back up. You have to sign back in, relaunch whatever you were doing. A couple times a week is a lot. A couple times a week is a lot. Uh, it's, is, it is, I assume that this is a remnant of the transition to 64-bit because it mostly happens while you're in 64-bit apps like Safari and, and some of the new, newer games. Um, it's, it's not good, and it, they have to improve that uh, rapidly. Wow. So. Uh, the good I news think is, that, I, I would say that is a reason to hold off. I, I, I was going to say that's one of the conclusions we're going to get to. The, the one thing I would say is that uh, because the phone <laughs> reboots is so fast, it reboots really fast. It's kind of a that's not a good thing necessarily. No. But uh, but yeah. Um, and then I think that's it. I think that's all the high points. I got the case. Oh yeah, you got the leather case. I got the leather case. I'm going to put it on your iPhone five. That looks really ugly. It is. This one's yellow. You can see it started out with this kind of soft suede finish. I don't know if you can see that on the shot. But it's leather. It's not suede. Well, it's well, leather is suede is leather. Okay. Um, as it's worn in my pockets on the edges, it's getting smooth. So I think that this is going to be like the original leather iPad covers, where as you carry it, it starts to get shiny and smooth and looks more leathery. I, I'm not necessarily the hugest fan. I think there's definitely better cases out there for forty bucks. What are the color options? Um, it's yellow, red, gray, white black and I think maybe a blue. You chose the worst color. I, I chose the color that they had available. Wow. So by the time I got there, this was this was what was this this one was it. Um, it tucks in nicely, it fits well, it gives a good lip around the edge of the glass, so it does actually protect from from face down drops. Um, I, I would there, like I said, for 40 bucks, there are definitely better cases out there than the Apple provided one. The other big bummer is because the hole for the lightning connector is very narrow, uh, the Apple dock to lightning adapters that they sold last year, the squatty ones, not mm -hmm. the big fat ones, not the ones with the cable, uh, if you're using that in your car, you won't be able to plug it in. So uh, not so awesome. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's the iPhone 5S. I, I think this phone is I think it's a good phone. The crashes are worrisome. Uh, they've definitely decreased from the initial launch to the 6.0.2 or whatever we're on now, or seven, 6. Point, this is iOS 6, right? 7. 7. 7.0.2. 7 mm -hmm. um, but, but the number of crashes I'm having now are still not where I would like this phone to be. Touch ID is a matter of convenience. Uh, the photo stuff, I think, the photo stuff is actually new functionality. Yes. J just to be clear, I think Touch ID is pretty good. I, I, I actually like it. I miss it on devices that I don't have it on. Um, the photo stuff is great. The burst mode is pretty good on this revision. I think as they as they refine that going forward, it's going to get even better. Um, the high speed is novel, but if you have kids or pets or do things that are outside and don't require zoom, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I like this is a good phone. It's the best iPhone I've used. I don't think it's worth an upgrade from the five, especially if you're off contract. Um, and and. But it's a great upgrade from a four for us. Anything that's not the tall, the new tall screen is is this is a big improvement, and yeah. I think you'll be very pleased by and it. And don't get the five C if you can spare the extra hundred bucks. Yeah, a hundred bucks more for the for this over the five C is definitely worth it. And even if you have the option of getting a higher capacity five C, that's that's tough. Uh, 
I think I think the the uh, going with the five S save up the extra hundred dollars. Wait a, wait a month maybe. Yeah, Sa save the money. I think waiting a month isn't a bad isn't bad advice in general. Just to see if they work out the rest of the issues with the gyroscope and the crashing. Um, this, the capacity is tough on this because 16 gigs with the high speed, if you're shooting a lot of high speed video, you get crazy into burst photos. You're going to go through that really, really fast. Yeah. So um, I, I think 32 gigs is, is, I mean, that's what I ended up getting. I think 32 gigs is where you want to be probably for this phone. And is it all, uh, offered unlocked? Uh, I don't know if they're selling unlocked yet. I know that the Verizon model, if you buy that off contract and pay full price, you can get the SIM card works. The SIM card slot is is live for all carriers, even AT and T and T Mobile. Uh, the carrier bands are always the problem. T Mobile selling the phone now, so that's not an issue anymore. You can go get a T Mobile phone from T Mobile instead of buying the AT and T one, and then trying to unlock it. And of course, there's no jailbreaks yet. So if you're into jailbroken apps, don't go buy a new iPhone because you're not going to be able to do that. So there's no technical difference between the Verizon model and the. I think the AT and there's still a different. You still there's they are still different SKUs. Um, my understanding is that there's some antenna differences. I don't know the specifics on that though, so uh, right. look that up online if you want to know more about which which models go with which carriers. All right. Um, so that's the iPhone 5S. It's pretty good. The crashing is a bummer. Uh, we'll be back with more from Tested soon. I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys later. Bye. All right. You want to test this flash? The lights are off. Lights are off. Uh, wait. I'm going to trust. You're going to look, you. look right at it. I'm going to look right at it. Okay. So the only light that's in here is reflected off of the skylight. Don't uh, flash me, Smith. Don't flash me. Did you get flashed? Did not get flashed. I've taken like four pictures. Take a step step back a little bit. It's still on auto. There oh, you go. God. Oh yeah, that was a flash. Uh, wow. And see, it lost focus on that one too, so that illustrates all of the things we talked about. How are wow. your eyes, Norm? Ooh. How's the flash? Do you like it? Is the new flash good? It's blinding. There you go.